time for my mental checkup here at my psychiatrist's office. And it's time to check in so that I can keep getting my medication. Here we go. And we're back. So obviously for those people who don't have a psychiatrist and who don't have these same kind of issues, you might not exactly get how I feel right now, but I feel really good because there's something special about going into your psychiatrist's office who you've been seeing for a couple years now and him saying, you, you look really good. You sound really good. And you know, him kind of like lengthening out the time that he feels he needs to see you. So usually it was every two months and now he's saying, don't come back for three months. You're good. If I can get to a point where I only have to check in with him every like two times a year or four times a year, I feel pretty stable. And that means that he trusts me as well, that he thinks I'm pretty stable. And that's it's like getting a gold star on your brain. Now it's time to go home. It's gonna be one of those videos. Now that I'm back at the house and the rest of the day is mostly over, there's been a few things that have happened throughout the day that, you know, I'll catch you up on. And before I go into this, I'll preface that I haven't lost my positivity or felt like the positive momentum is still going on, but always when you're having a positive streak, there's always going to be a day or series of days that are gonna come along and test that. So before heading out to my doctor's appointment this morning, I was able actually to drop Logan off at his daycare for the day. They had an extra spot open, so we were able to drop him off there, which was great. And I wouldn't have to rush when I got home to actually run and get him. He was still gonna be there for another hour or so, so I could kind of take my time. Uh -huh. But things started to backslide just a little bit when we got word that at the daycare, Logan had had another biting incident, which is always just a little bit disappointing, because like I said, you don't want your kid to be that biter. Michelle used to run a daycare for many, many years, and she knows what it's like to be those parents when you have to hear that information saying your kid's the one that's doing the biting. There's always one or maybe two of you are really unlucky, but it's just really awful to be those parents because it's such a hard behavior to try to regulate or to try to work with because at that age, at two and a half, it's very hard to mold them in certain behaviors. You have to try a lot of different tactics to see what works with that particular child. And Michelle's actually been working with the behaviorist to work with Logan as well, just to see what it is that we could do. Certain directions that we can try to take with him that might work better than the things that we've tried in the past. And things have definitely gotten better, but he's having a little bit of a backslide moment. And it's very likely that some of that is actually from the fact that Liam's now in the picture. So he's super, super sweet with Liam, and he's obviously going to be a very attentive and very emotionally attached big brother. But also it's possible that he's acting out uh, to try to gain some of the attention that he's losing because now he's not the focus. But that made the day kind of difficult with him. He was kind of on the verge and over the line in terms of tantrums all day long. He has a really hard time waking up from naps. So Michelle had gone in to get him, but he started freaking out saying he wanted me to go get him. And then when I went to get him, you know, Michelle was going to take him to the doctors because she gets her allergy shots and she was going to take him along. He loves those trips. The people at the office love him. They always give him a lollipop. So he was going to be excited about it. Before he went down for a nap, Michelle told him, if you're a really good boy when you wake up and you don't cry and don't throw a temper tantrum because he just seems to do it all the time when he wakes up from naps. I'll take you to the doctors and you'll get a lollipop there and it'll be great. So he went right to sleep. He was like really into it. But when he got up, he through a fit, you always have to stand by as parents. I think when you make a threat or a deal with that child saying, if you do this, this is the repercussion. You have to stand by it. No matter how hard it is to do, no matter how heartbreaking it is to see them so upset, you have to stand by it. Cause otherwise they will learn that if they throw these tantrums, they get their way. So Michelle left and went to the doctor. And when he saw her leave, he just lost it. And he was throwing a tantrum for almost the entire time she was gone. Uh, now, instead of me, he wanted her. And basically it came to the point where he just wanted whatever wasn't around him. And it's not like I've never dealt with his tantrums before and I thought that I was getting better. And I, overall, I am getting better at dealing with them and being very patient with them. But this one was just going on and on and on. And maybe it's because Liam's in the picture too and I had to worry about taking care of him on top of Logan. It was just really, it was getting under my skin and I could start to feel all those old uh, triggers, all the anxiety, uh, kicking in and just pushing me to the to my own personal limit and I had to keep kind of like putting Logan in what we call his cry spot and just kind of walking away because I didn't want to get really angry with him I didn't want to yell at him but I was starting to get to this point where I didn't know what else to do and the absolute worst part about it is that when she comes home he calms down immediately because he's basically gotten what he wanted you know and he apologizes or we tell him to apologize for the tantrums and he comes over and apologizes but it takes takes me, you know, 
hours to come down from that when I've been pushed to that level. When I get so angry, I can feel it in my fingertips. I feel like they're just gonna lash out and like, you know, hit a wall or I'm gonna, you know, bash my head into a cabinet to just, just do something about it because it's driving me insane. And it takes a long time for that to wean down. And at those times, it feels like all the progress and all the work that I've done over the last two years on myself it is suddenly just wiped away, that I'm back to square one and that so disheartening and it makes me so depressed and of course then the depression kicks in and so it's a really vicious circle but I try to remind myself that two years ago when those things would happen it would take me days to get over it I would it really would take me just days and days to kind of get out of that cycle and that funk and you know today it just took me maybe an hour and a half maybe just 90 minutes of just kind of being on my own kind of working on my own things and then after that I was able to go over to the couch where Logan was watching some videos on the iPad and just scoop them up, put them on my lap and watch them with him because I felt I wanted to reconnect with him. I wanted to feel good with him and not be angry at him. I didn't want to put him to bed when I was angry or he was angry. So to the parents out there who may be watching this video, I would love to hear how you feel about situations like that. Have you been through those yourself and what it is that you do to handle those? Because there, I'm always open to suggestion. I'm always looking for different avenues to try to take with him and possibly with Liam when he gets to that age. I mean, right now he's the chillest baby in existence. I mean, he's like the McConaughey of children if he just didn't wear his shirts at all. Mm -hmm. That was a, an ode to Hannah Hart. Mm. So making it to the end of the day was a big deal. One of the good things that always comes out, there's always silver lining, was the fact that Michelle and I were on the same page. We were feeling the same frustration. We empathized very directly with how the other one was taking it. And we knew, you know, we, we both understood the feelings and we were able to lend each other the support we needed to make sure that we could kind of like, do you need to take a couple minutes to yourself? I'll take care of the kids. Do you need a couple minutes to yourself? I'll take care of the kids. Like we were able to balance that off so that neither of us kind of went over that edge and, you know, ran outside and ransacked neighbor's lawn and, you know, who knows what else. Oh, and if anyone's curious, the thing that I've been picking up here, this little glass here, uh, this is adult chocolate milk. And I like to say that the adult in me likes the flavor while the child in me likes the alcohol. Seriously though, I don't drink very much at all. This is one of the few things that I really like and I am a, and I am a serious lightweight. That one glass will either make me sleep through the rest of the night soundly or I'll be sleeping in the bathroom trying not to throw up. So that's been my day. It's almost the end of the week. It's getting closer and closer to the time that I'm gonna be heading back to work and that's gonna kind of change the dynamic. I'm really hoping that things go well enough around here that Michelle doesn't go over her limit, uh, her emotional line in the sand. Also, I finished a review of the latest album of the band Walk Off the Earth. Uh, you should see that posted on the blog soon and I'll be putting together a video for that which will be released later when I've got more kind of put together to start that thread. Oh, and if anyone's out there, this part of the two months of Thanksgiving hashtag with the Libra friends, I did reach my first goal of getting over 100 subs. It's at 103 now, ding ding. And my other goal of actually cutting down a few pounds, cutting down about five, maybe five to 10 pounds, bringing my waistline in just a little bit to where it was before. Yeah, that goal hasn't really started yet. It'll get there. I'm sure, but yeah, I just have not had the mental and emotional and physical capacity to even dive into that, getting back on a workout routine, things like that. But but I think that once I get back to work and I start figuring out where my day is gonna settle, where I need to spend those hours and those minutes and just locking that together, I'm hoping that that will help out. But everyone else using that hashtag, I hope you are doing really well on your goals and look forward to hearing about how well you've completed them at the end of the two months. That's all for today, see you guys tomorrow and as always, be good to each other.